Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 2018 Future of Dentistry event. I'm your host, Kent Sears. Today, I am super excited to be joined by Dr. Lou Schumann. Now, as by way of introductions, I kid you not, I could probably spend the entire 30 minutes just introducing Dr. Schumann and going through all the accomplishments that he has had across this industry. Uh, he's done a tremendous amount uh, for dentistry, but I'll just give a very brief introduction so we can hop into it and, and hear from him. Uh, so Dr. Schumann is currently the president and CEO of Celerent Consulting Group. Uh, he's well known across the industry for his expertise in internet strategy, strategic relations, emerging technologies, digital marketing, operational practice management, and a host of other things as well. He's a board member and advisor to several organizations out there, and he's been well-received as a speaker and educator throughout the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan. So if you've been to any of the major dental conferences, you have more than likely had the opportunity to hear from him. Uh, Dr. Schumann, it's an honor to have you with us. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. My pleasure. Privilege to be here. All right. Well, let's start off. Um, if you wouldn't mind just telling our viewers a little bit more about yourself in terms of your career and you know what you're focused on now, and what's that journey that's gotten you to the point of, of what you're doing now and what you're passionate about? And I know you're you're doing a ton of things out there, uh, <laughs> but just giving us a focus of some of the, the major things that you're really passionate about right now in the field of dentistry. Well, I'm really passionate about um, a few things right now. Very passionate about sleep. Um, I'm a big believer that we as a profession have a unique ability to save lives. And um, I'm the managing editor of a, a dental sleep practice journal. And the reason why I was involved with the MedMark to create that is I'm on a mission to try to get our whole profession to screen. As far as going into actual treating patients that have sleep apnea, that of course is a personal decision for the practitioner, but my personal mission is that we all screen because we can save lives. And I was very excited, by the way, October 23rd, uh, the ADA came out with a, a statement on um, screening and treating sleep. So that has been a mission for four years that is um, continuing to, to move forward with that. And I'm glad to see that the ADA has, uh, has made a statement to there. I'm completely passionate about what we're going to be talking about today, which is online uh, marketing. And uh, the reason why I'm very passionate about that is I feel that it is critical for our uh, profession and my peers to move into that space um, uh, enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. um, I feel as a profession we've been taken advantage of that because we don't have the knowledge base to be able to really excel in that area, which we wouldn't expect to, that there are companies that have taken advantage of us. And so I do a lot of lecturing around the country to sort of uh, give us the, uh, uh, the enth to create the enthusiasm and also uh, give a really a peer to peer approach of what it means to be online. So I'm very, very focused on that and, and trying to support the community to, to really take that, that big step. Uh, as a result of Celerant, my company, my clients are companies. We, we grow companies, we're an incubator, and another passion is new technologies. And we've got stuff coming into our, into our space that's amazing between artificial intelligence and machine learning and antimicrobials, and it's just such cool stuff, starch nanoparticles, and all of this are companies that are coming up with products that will benefit us and, of course, most importantly, our patients. And uh, then there's my award program, the Seller and Best of Class Technology Awards, which I'm passionate about. It's our 10th year, hard to believe. Um, and that's been a mission to uh, create an award that is unbiased, that is a rigorous, transparent process to truly provide the, uh, the, the technologies, the products that we all should really have in our practices. And I'm blessed to have an amazing committee who votes on that and uh, as they say for the companies it's become the Oscar uh, of uh, dental awards which has meant a lot me a lot of blood sweat and tears to get there so there's some passions <laughs> Excellent. well I know I know you have such a wide knowledge base um, and I, we could talk to you about any one of those things and have a great conversation we'll talk about marketing uh, and let's let's start with just you know 
tell us a little bit about your thoughts and how the role of marketing has shifted and, of course, magnified for the private practice dentist over the past 10 to 15 years. Because this has been a big, big trend that's impacting the field. So if you take a step back, um, you know, just to give you an idea, if you go back to my journey, I at one point uh, is an orthodontist, which is my, uh, my training. Um, I, I had a dream to create a group practice. So I ended up having a 10 doctor, 25 team member group practice, six full-time GPs, all the specialties, five hygienists, the, the whole deal, which was a very special part of my career. Um, but then 10, 15 years ago, marketing was yellow pages, mm -hmm. right? If people even remember yeah. what that was, <laughs> it's amazing how, yeah. how those books then became, uh, went into the fireplace. Uh, but yeah, yellow pages uh, to this day and then, then personal referral. And we'll talk a little bit about how that's changed as we've moved from traditional mm -hmm. to modern. Um, direct mail was big then. I don't know, Valpac coupons were big then. Even uh, you'd get the new homeowner's addresses and send them like a basket. Um, that was the focus. Uh, that's changed dramatically today. Um, the focus now, of course, is the website. And the website truly is your hub um, yep. as a practice. And, and instead of the, the, you know, the shingle on the door walking in, your website is really your hub. I look at it as the website is the hub. And then the spokes of the wheel is your social media properties which are so critical today, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and then of course, the impact of Google and making sure that through um, search engine optimization that we're highly ranked as well. And so marketing has changed from, you know, that sort of traditional, which I still believe some of those concepts should remain uh, to a, you know, personal for example, you know, is, is, is uh, defined differently today, but, um, new modern, what I call modern marketing has really had a, a huge impact compared to 10 or 15 years ago. That's, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. What, what are some of the trends do you think that are happening in the industry right now that's driving the, the criticalness of effective marketing? So what, what is making it so important for dentists to have a great marketing plan in place? Well, first of all, the, one of the most important things is recognizing the shift from traditional to, um, to modern marketing. And, and the reason why uh, it's critical to follow that shift is, is you, you have to go where your customer goes, is going. And uh, research has shown that um, the target market for dentists are women 25 to 49. That's, that's our target market. They're the decision makers for themselves, for their spouses, for their, for their, their children. And so if you look at some of the research, and anytime, by the way, because I don't have slides, but anytime I mention a study, it's a study that's done by reputable, you know, well-known research firms like Jupiter, et cetera, when I bring them, when I bring them up, and 96% of all women 25 to 49 are online. So you're talking about where's your customer base if women 25 to 49 is your target, they're online. The next question is, are they looking for dentistry? And so you start to look at keywords like dentist, dental, dentistry, and millions of searches in that category. So your target is there, they're, they're looking for dentistry. And so the key is, is that we need to shift our marketing plan to where they are and they're online. Now that doesn't mean we still don't wanna give our, as we'll say, our dental assistants and our team business cards to give out at the soccer games, that shouldn't ever go away, but we have to look at the fact that there is a, a, a crit, there's been a critical change to move online in order to grow our practices. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let, me, let me ask you one in particular, you know, corporate dentistry and the rise of, the, you know, the non-traditional private practice dentist office. How do you feel that's impacted the importance of marketing and, and maybe even the way that dentists need to go about marketing their, their practice and their services? Well, the competition, of course, is significant. Uh, and, and, and in order to, to find yourself, you know, highly ranked, it's, it, you're in competition now with significant numbers of practitioners, be it group practices, specialty practices. Look at orthodontics, for example. 
between you know clear aligners now GPs orthos etc so the so the fact is is that um, you need to you know create a marketing plan that gets you seen and and that has an impact on your patient base and there's two ways to look at that there's going after the new patient base in the area and then there's your how do you grow your existing patient base um, in marketing there's something called and this is really important there's something called ADI in traditional marketing your area of demographic influence because you don't want to be marketing for the state of Massachusetts you know you want to be marketing for where your patients come from so for example um, a typical suburban practice their area of demographic influence is about a 10 mile radius and that's where you know now that's different if you're in New York City where if you can get one building you're you're done you know but uh, for a typical suburban practice about 10 miles and you need to to combine both traditional and online marketing and also which I'm going to talk a little bit today is also about utilizing technologies it's that combination for you to be able to compete and if you would like I can sort of walk you through the, what I consider the three different major verticals in order to have a complete campaign for the practice. Would you like me to, 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 to start to go through that? Yeah, that uh, that'd be fantastic. And that's actually leading into the next thing I want to talk about was, you know, let's talk about that new patient marketing. But yes, walk us through those three verticals. That'd be great. Okay. So let's, let's start with um, how do you grow your practice? Because that's really what this is about. And mm -hmm. Um, if you you know if you're starting to look at a marketing plan here's a couple things that I would recommend number one is I would do a, an e-newsletter I would I would create an e-newsletter focusing on um, your patient base and, and use that to educate um, to promote and to tie yourself in engagement is critical and you hear engagement a lot like online but your own e-newsletter is a great way to engage. If let's say you added comb beam into your practice and to explain the benefits of what that is and how you have the ability to treatment plan better that you can see 3D now. Um, it also shows the patient base that you're state of the art, that you're, you're, you're integrating the latest in technologies. It, it, there's study after study that, that talks about that, that prospective patients want practices that are state-of-the-art that are staying up to speed um, in technologies. Here's another one which you probably, um, this is probably a first one because I'm just uh, introducing this with some of my own companies. I, I highly believe a whitening for life campaign can really grow a practice. I'm working with um, CAO group as a client and I'm bringing them up because they're doing something brilliant. They're working with their practices and they custom design their whitening boxes. So the whitening, even though it's sheer white by them, which is this amazing technology, they custom create the boxes so it's coming from the practice. And what you do is you do a new patient special, and if they come in for the new patient special, they get whitening for life. So they get a box the day they come in for their patient exam and x-rays and cleaning, and then if they come to recall, which they have to come, then they get the whitening strips to maintain their whitening for life. And so it becomes sort of a partnership, um, but I think that's a great idea to grow a practice because you know everybody is, is excited about the aesthetics and it's become a very important part of practice. So there's another idea for a new patient um, marketing plan. Uh, another would be, um, let's, start to, um, let's start to look at your website. Uh, the home page is the most important page on your website, but the second most important page is the doctor page. And the third most important page is the team page. And there's websites that I go to don't even have a team page. So let's start with the doctor site. Why is that so critical in a marketing campaign is because that's where the women 25 to 49 are going to go when they come to your site. They're going to look at, you know, they're going to come in. It takes 10, you have 10 seconds to keep them. That's so I, the home page is so important. And then 90 seconds to engage. And one of the first things they're going to do is they're going to go to the doctor page. Now, the doctor page should not be I won the three service amalgam award while I was in dental school. That's not what they're looking for. You want to see a picture of the doctor with their family. 
you want to hear stories about why you went into the profession, why it's so important. There was one that I show when I, um, I'm on the podium about um, a dentist who was in Little League and, and broke his tooth and went to the dentist who was just amazed at being taken care of and never forgot it. And that's why he went into dentistry. Like for me, uh, my dad was a, a dentist and we had a one chair practice in our house. And the pra that, that was as big, bigger than our house was. And what I'll never forget was um, all the community used to come to see him in that one chair practice us and they loved him. And I still remember looking at him go someday, I would like to be him, and that's why I went to dentistry. So the doctor page should engage. It should be personal. The team page is key, and I know I'm putting this into a, a, a marketing plan, but again, this is where these pr prospective patients are going to go. And you'd be amazed that how many people go in there because who lives in the ADI? Who lives in that 10-mile radius? All of your team does. That's why I always say all of them should have business cards because all of a sudden the, you know, each individual gets to write about their journey, each team member, and also go, oh my God, their daughter plays with my daughter in the soccer team and I didn't even know that that was a practitioner. And that's something that I wanna say is so important. I just came from a medical conference, very sophisticated stuff. And they started talking about how do you get your new patients? And you know, you're talking about online and reviews and reputation management at the end of the day talking to your neighbor talking to a friend and i sat back and i went they're right they're right how do i see my physician i have a friend who's a a, a, a doctor um, and i called him and i said who should i see and he said well see the guy i see so even though there's all the technology in the online um the personal aspect should never be forgotten because that's the profession we're in. For us, it's still personal. It's still one-on-one, -on -one, and our goal is to improve the quality of life of the patients we see, and that's done in person. So we should never, no matter what we do with a marketing plan, never forget that that's our foundation. We can use all the technologies we want, but it still comes to that face-to-face. -face. So give them business cards. They'll go to the soccer games, they'll go to the PTA, and they'll start talking about the practice. So I'm big on that. Um, SEO is critical. I could spend the next half an hour just talking about search engine optimization. But the key thing is, is that um, there's something called you know, a title tag. Um, and, and a title tag is when you go to your website at the top of each page is 140 characters where that dictates when someone puts their word in that little white box, that's where the spiders go first. Mm -hmm. And a lot of practitioners don't realize that we have control of those 140 characters. So if I'm doing Invisalign, if I'm doing whitening, you want to put those keywords, you know, my location, you know, in those 140 characters so that the spiders will stop. Because what's SEO is two things, right? It's search engine and optimization. Search engine is, is, you know, the companies like Google and Bing, when someone puts the words into the little white box to go out and find the most relevant information they can and bring it back. Well, optimization is what can we do so that when those spiders go to our site, they'll stop. And the title tag is first. And if we don't put the words in, the keywords in, Google does. Now the question is, do we want Google making the decisions of what are the important keywords that should be on every page about our site? No. So this is the importance of working with an online marketing company that can help you because that's the first place they go. Then they go to a meta description. And what's a meta description? Well, when we go to Google, we put the words in. It's those words that tells us about that site and should we go there. Again, we can write that. We so when you talk about a marketing plan, how powerful is it that we get to write what's about our practice and put the keywords in like dentist or dental or and you know clear aligners or you know the different words that are important. Um, if we don't write that, Google does. And then ultimately content is key. And so these are some of the things when we talk about, you know, um, a, a new pa a patient marketing plan. Um, the website should be friendly, 
you know, we talked about state of the art. I'm a big believer in a new patient services page. That if I'm going into your practice, I go to your website, if there's a page that's dedicated for the new patient and services, I'm going to go there. Um, I'm going to see what, you know, what you provide. I'm going to see location. Something that's new lately that's been coming up, been very successful, is a video on the homepage about your practice. Yeah. Another thing that I think is really critical and, and is, is working really well, YouTube testimonials. Now, again, you're, you've asked about a new patient marketing program, but all of these things are what's in the umbrella in order to get yep. patients to come to your practice. Yep. YouTube testimonials are huge. The use of video is huge. So you start doing that, then you start looking at technologies. Oh my God, I have to tell you, Ken, some of the stuff that's out right now is crazy. So there's a company called MMG Fusion. I want the attendees to remember that name. They're relatively- Say, say, say the name one more time. MMG Fusion. Okay. All right. they, they've, they're launching at midwinter a technology called ChairFill. What ChairFill does is it is completely automated. It's machine learning, automation. It will go into your records and you can program it, but it's real simple. It will find the most profitable dentistry that has not yet been done in the treatment plans mm -hmm. of the records. It will communicate with the patients by itself. It can do it by text, email, you can do a video. It will communicate with the patients and then it will set up the appointment all without human involvement. Wow, it's amazing. All, all automatically. That's incredible. And then it puts a little logo on the appointment so you can look at your schedule and you can go, oh my God, all yeah. these appointments were filled by that automated product. Yeah. So there's one. There's another one by a company called Simplify, um, and I'll spell it. It's S-I-M-P-L-I-F-E-Y-E, -E, Simplify. Okay. They've come out with a program for growing patients called Amplify, and I don't know how they do it. It's so cool. So what they have been able to do is if you go through the process of a, of a consumer going to their website, right, they put the white words in. It goes to the meta description, they click. When it goes to the home page, Amplify recognizes it's a potential new patient coming to mm -hmm. the home page, and yep. Simplify has a team of people that starts a chat right okay. from the get go. Hi, how are you? Welcome yeah. to our practices. What can we do for you? So instead of going through the traditional home mm -hmm. page, then surf to the doctor page, you have a communication starting right as they enter and already the conversion ratios are really really special so you start that's very cool is that very cool so you that start is. With, that's amazing that, that, isn't it right so um and there's other things coming like you know we hear about hubspot right these um customer relationship management software programs mm -hmm. they're amazing now they're very expensive for the most part um, and what do they do? They create what's known as a drip campaign. And what I love about this is that if you look back at traditional marketing, there used to be something called gross rating points. We call them grips. And what grips were is by doing radio and doing TV, it would be, you know, it's awareness, 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 awareness to trial. Mm -hmm. right? And so you would rate the amount of points that you needed to convert that customer to trial using gross rating points. Today, it's about touches. And research shows that about seven touches are necessary to get to conversion. So what uh, CRM does is that once there's a contact, then the, it automatically, based on things you've created, will continue to communicate with that prospective customer. If they're interested in a product, here comes education. Maybe then comes a special offer that maybe comes testimonials. Yeah. And it keeps going automatically until the patient converts. Now, why do I bring that up? I truly feel, as we start to look at the future, that those programs, the costs are gonna come way down to the point where there'll be corporate CRM, but there's also gonna be individual CRM. Mm -hmm. So we as practitioners will be able to buy those programs and 
create those different possible touches that happen automatically when we're running um, a patient marketing program. So these are some of the things, again, you know, the newsletter, I'm a big fan of that because of its education, be able to go. And, and the other thing about an e-newsletter is, uh, you know, we haven't talked about the existing patient base. So critical. Yeah. You know, survey after survey, research after research, Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, you name it, the cost to grow an existing customer versus the cost to bring in a new customer yep. is dramatic. It is so much yeah, easier. Go ahead. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that point up because I think that's one of the things, you know, I wanted to get your, your viewpoint on was it's so much of the time that focuses on new patient acquisition, uh, oh. but the internal marketing is just as critical for a practice to sustain it, itself. So uh, that's great. If you can talk to us a little bit about, you know, what should you have in an internal marketing plan? What's critical there? What best practices that you recommend? So, you know, when there used to be records on the wall, <laughs> yeah. I would used to walk in and I would like bow down to the wall because yep. that's your existing patient base. And there's so much dentistry in those records that is, yep. and, 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 and again, to be able to market to an existing patient base and to get them to come back in is so much more cost effective. The other piece is, is that, Let's not forget that if you have one convert, you've got their family. Uh -huh. so, you, you, yeah. so you have the ability to not only try to get your existing customer come in, but also to then also um, be able to communicate with the family. So how do, we, um, how do we go after our existing patient base to grow our practice? And this starts to get into, again, a combination of modern marketing, and um, traditional marketing. Um, I'm going to go through some of the things that I think are critical that should um, be included in an existing traditional campaign because I have something that I call relationship intensity through customer service. And, okay. and what I mean by that is, is that um, customer service now is a lost art. And okay. if you have it, you are the exception. And so when you start internal marketing and start talking about how to grow from an internal perspective, mm -hmm. here's where traditional plays a big role. So for example, let's just use me as an orthodontist. Yeah. Uh, and now everyone's doing aligners and it's grown into the general practitioner. Yeah. Um, I did a survey. Um, I to 15,000 consumers, patients, I gave them a whole list of the internal marketing traditional opportunities. What would they pick? Number one was so far ahead of the rest that there really wasn't a number two. I'll give you two uh -huh. and three anyways. Number one, the thing that meant the most to the patient, a personal phone call within 24 really? hours to see how okay. they were. Now Very that nice. doesn't mean all the time, but if you're uh -huh. doing a major procedure, you're sure. doing surgery, Yep. You're doing, you're putting brackets on to call yep. them 24 hours after just to see how they're doing has huge impact. Absolutely. Huge impact. I had an orthodontist that had like 10 locations and he heard me present and mm -hmm. he, he started doing that and he sent me an email and said, the impact has been unbelievable. The people are in shock <laughs> that their own doctor, instead of a text, is getting a phone call to see how they're yeah. doing. So when yeah. we talk about growing practices, you know, it's things like that. Number two and number three, by the way, uh, handwritten thank you note for coming to the mm -hmm. practice and mm -hmm. a handwritten note for referring a patient to the practice. Okay. Real yeah. handwriting. So those are things that you know can definitely um, have an impact. Another thing I believe in that's really important is have your team learn about the patients, learn about their lives, learn about what they do, and, and record it into their records. It can be electronic yeah. now. I used to, years ago, we had, a, we called it the white page program. We had a piece yeah. of white yeah. paper in every record. Now we can do it electronically. 
Yeah. That is huge. When you go in for, uh, you know, recall visits six months later, mm -hmm. all of a sudden in the records, you know, because, you know, there, there's been this constant desire to learn about your patient base and you can walk in and someone's graduated, um, you know, someone's gotten a promotion. I will give you, again, an example. I go in for an orthodontic consult. Mom and dad's there with the teenager. Um, mm -hmm. I can I look at my records where my team has been constantly putting in everything that they learn about the patient. Julie won the state championship in soccer. They've never met me before. I walk in, I go, hi, Mrs. Jones, hi, Mr. Jones, hi, Julie. Before we start, I just want to congratulate you for winning the state soccer championship. And the parents look at me and go, are you kidding me? How did you know yeah. that? That's yeah. our job to know what, yeah. about our patients. Now, do you think that that orthodontic case is going forward with treatment before she even opens her mouth? Yeah. Yes. So when you talk about how to grow, you know, an existing patient base, like when a patient finishes, let's say you've done some work, I call it the mutual admiration society effect. That assistant takes that patient and walks them around the office, and it is a celebration. Mm -hmm. It is a celebration. And, and, and that patient is so excited that by the time they leave, they're this high off the ground. Yeah. And yeah. they go back and they tell their friends, oh, my God, I love my office. They're, I just, and, yes, these are traditional. But, you know, we work with people face-to-face, -face and these are the things that, you know, can have impact. I have something that, that I call facility marketability. What is facility marketability? Facility marketability is when that patient picks up the phone, be it through their website, be it through anything else, you should do a complete review from the minute they pick up the phone to when they leave the office the first mm -hmm. time. Every touch, every piece of, you know, from the office cleanliness, communication strategy, take it, for anyone who's, who's listening, take the time and do a complete walkthrough as if you were a new patient. And you're yeah. going to learn a lot yeah. about yeah. what's the best way for that process for that process to occur. And so when we start talking about, you know, internal marketing, notice none of those were electronic. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, and that's, everything you're talking about is that personal touch, right? Um, so with all the focus on digital media, digital advertising, it still very much comes back to the experience that the patient's going to have and that relationship that they're going to have with you as the doctor and with your team, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now let's talk about um, some of the working with existing patients and or, or, or regular patients online. We have, okay. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go to the, to the website, okay, mm -hmm. which, is, which is your hub. One of the things that I see all the time, which I change with websites all the time, is there's lack of engagement, right? The, the website is beautiful, yep. but, but there's no call to action. And the key to the website is a call to action. Yeah. And yep. so, you know, you want to encourage the patient to pick up the phone and make a call. Or you want to encourage the patient to make an appointment online if they can, or to yep. fill out a form. And so one of the things that I always recommend is go to your site as if you were a new patient. Mm -hmm. And how many times are you asking me to actually engage with you? Yep. And it should be all the time. Yep. So we can make this beautiful home, and we can dress it up, and we can put beautiful content in it, but it's not going to do us any good unless we engage unless yep. we, commit, we, we commit to a, a call to action. Um, that's, that's really important. Um, there are key features, you know, when, when you look at a website that is important to get commitment, you know, and, and, and you know, it's funny that some of the things that I'm going to say sound, they, they sound um, like obvious, but when, I, when I'm on a podium, I show website after website, and those things aren't there. So when I, you know, so when I say, you know, telephone and address on the homepage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Te telephone and address on the homepage, yeah. Yeah. and it's, it's amazing how many thing, times it's not there. Payment options are critical because, you know, that you know that there's going to be a commitment. Um, before and afters are very important, but 
when I say before and afters, there's a couple of things that's important there. Um, I'm not interested in the Guinness World Book of Record with those spreaders of how far you can pull the cheeks apart and take the pictures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, professional, really nice, you know, yeah. uh, full face, not intraorals. Yeah. That, that's key. I, I can't say enough about YouTube. Uh, video is critical. It's not only critical for um, your rankings because, as we know, YouTube is owned by who? Google. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so, so YouTube is critical. Video testimonials, you know, work really well. Um, I mentioned the practice overview, a video on the homepage. I think that's, I think that's really important. I mentioned the a services new page. If if you introduce something new to your practice, let's say you introduce. Invisalign. Um, Google likes a whole page on that on a topic. They don't like integration. Homepage they understand, yeah. but, but the spiders and the way the algorithms, the software works is that um, it's good to, to put a whole page on the subject. Mm -hmm. They like yeah. that. And then I know I'm, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can, but remember if you put a full page there, Mm -hmm. Up at the top is the title tag, that yep. white area where you put keywords in, and make sure you put the keywords in that relate to the page. Makes it, you know, I mean, makes it, you know, easier for the spiders uh, to find it. Yeah. Um, other other areas, and you don't mind. I'm just going now. <laughs> you yeah, got me yeah. going. So. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to stop. You, you, you go. Yeah. Keep going. All right, keep going. Um, so. There's something called um, the hummingbird algorithm. And you're gonna go, why am I bringing that up? It's, uh, it's the Google hummingbird algorithm and it's something I'm really excited about because um, it can actually in help whoever's listening uh, to get higher ranked by Google. Now, now what is the hummingbird algorithm? Well, you know, Google finally did what Ask Jeeves and Ask.com couldn't do. The Google algorithm, which really didn't get the press that it deserves, it, it, it's the first time that Google can actually answer a question instead of just focusing on keywords. Yep. So you can ask it a question and now it recognizes it's a question and will yep. try to answer it instead of looking at each individual word. Actually, the way Google said it in their announcement was if you had put in the question, um, I, you know, how do I, I want to learn more about the bike chain on my Trek bike. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, it would go to bikes.com. Yep. Yep. You know, it would go to Trek. But now they know that you're actually asking a question and they're looking for an answer. Now, the, one of the things that I'm very fortunate about is um, I'm very fortunate that I have a number of friends that are um, experts in mm -hmm online marketing. They're not from dentistry. Uh, this is what they do for a living. Yep. And they're the truly experts. I'm an educator, right? When I ran my own internet company and I was doing it 24 seven, I got to call myself an expert. Now I'm, I'm an educator and they, they teach me a lot that allows me to educate. So I asked them a question. I, and, and I was happy that I got the answer right. Um, Cause this is now, I've, I add this to my program. And, and so since now that the um, hummingbird can answer questions, what I ask practice to do is to have a staff meeting, get everybody together, and ask them what are the most common questions that you're asked in your practice? How much is a crown? What's the difference between yeah. braces and Invisalign, um, et cetera? Yeah. Uh, you know, do you take, you know, and, and so, and ask everyone from finance to assisting to hygiene to the doctors, and take those questions and create a separate page on your website. Yep. A frequently asked questions page, yep. and then answer those questions so that now you're, you've got a competitive advantage. You, you yep. have figured out the most common questions that are gonna come from the little white box from Google. Yep. The spiders yep. are gonna recognize those questions. That's gonna help rank you higher. Yep. And, and I had asked the experts if we did that, would that work? And they all said yes. Um, yeah. Well, and, and I think that's, that's a great point there. And, you know, the, 
typical dentist that's listening to this, they're probably not going to get into that level of detail with their marketing. But what, what advice do you have for somebody that's saying, you know, I know I need to do more with marketing. I love what Dr. Schumann's telling me here. Where do I start? So where, where do you point them to go in the right direction to get the help to implement these things? So everybody should have an online marketing company. Mm -hmm. We are not experts in it. You know, you, here's the thing. Your team can help. Because as you know, the, 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 the team today, a number of them are Facebook amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, right? But there's a difference between being yeah, sure. amazing and knowing how to utilize yeah. Facebook to grow a dental practice. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And so many, most online companies will engage with the team and mm -hmm. give them responsibilities, blog posting, yeah. You, yeah. Know, you know, engaging with Facebook, et cetera, doing YouTube. So the team plays a huge role, but there's no question everybody should have an online marketing yep. and, and marketing company. And this is where I get, this is one of the reasons why I'm on a podium because I have a slide that a lot of my peers completely can relate to. And that slide is, I know I need it. I don't know what I need. Yep. So here's, so here's a check. Yep. And when that happens, the problem is, is that we as practitioners don't know what the definition of success is. Absolutely. And unfortunately, there's a lot of online companies that don't, that know that we don't know mm -hmm. what the definition exactly. of success is. Yep. And so so um, as we speak, actually, um, and I'm going to, you're going to, I'm going to give you my email at the end or if you have it yeah and, and for those for those for those listening and watching uh that email will be below in the de description right underneath the video there so we'll put that in there so you can get a hold of dr schumann so i've just created a set of slides um and i'm working with the ceo of weo media ian mcnichol mm -hmm. and we, we're creating mm -hmm. something that i don't think has been presented before which is how you can hold your online marketing company accountable. Very nice. And this is, uh, this is the kind of thing that I want you to be able to put down on the desk and go, here's what we expect. Here's the number of new patients we expect, or at least we can't, we, we can't hold the online marketing company accountable for conversion, but we can based on the number of opportunities um, and so what I put together and then Ian's going to, going to help me with this is work because he owns an online marketing company and best of class, one of the best, um, online marketing companies in the industry. They did my website, sellerandconsulting.com. But what I love about them is that their contracts are one month at a time. See that when you start looking at these companies, if someone says it's a two year guarantee, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer I, I, Dr. Shim, I love it because you're preaching the same things that I talk to Dennis about. I talk to my prospective clients about the exact same thing. Don't get locked into long-term contracts. Hold your firm accountable. Know what they're doing for you. Have results to measure. It's perfect. And so what we're doing is, and this is, I'm actually going to be giving this program in March. I'm adding the set of slides of, of things that you now will hold your online marketing company accountable to provide to you. Yeah. And that way you have a gauge and we're creating in a way where it's black and white um, as far as what's necessary. And I don't think that's been done before or if it has, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it, but I'm doing it. And then I'm going, uh, I've been blessed to provide this presentation to five or 6,000 attendees. I'm sending it to all of them. <laughs> I'm saying this is wonderful. Hopefully this is, is, is really going to help. And so good. You must have it. I, it. Again, part of the program that um, I present when it talks about this subject is I have a slide that shows the explosion of online companies that, and, and it's, you know, over 750 now. And how can we yep. navigate through that? Yes, exactly. Exactly. So you, you need yep. that. that is, absolutely. Now that is super helpful. Um, well, 
Dr. Schumann, thank you so much for the, all the information that you provided. There's a ton of great stuff in there. Uh, I'll, I'll just throw out one more question, which is, you know, is there anything else, any other piece of, of advice that you want to leave our listeners with? Um, you know, you, we'll provide the email so they can contact you if they have questions, but just any other golden nuggets that you want to leave before we wrap up? Well, um, one of the things that you and I had chatted about prior to coming on was how do – which is really important to me too, and I'm glad that you had asked about it, was how does the dental community learn, right? Mm -hmm. How can they grow so that they're, you know, that they have knowledge, and that's really important. Yeah. And, you know, the journals are doing a very good job. Um, there's a lot of good articles there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big believer in following key opinion leaders. Um, mm -hmm. I'll mention a few, some I know you've already interviewed, but I'm a huge fan of Naomi Cooper. Mm -hmm. um, Fred Joyle, mm -hmm. um, Ian McNichol, who's the CEO of Way He yeah. Lectures, Seattle Study Club, all around the country. Um, they have great knowledge. And, yeah. um, you know, I would go to webinars, I would go to lectures, I would follow KOLs. Um, to me, that's a great way, uh, a great way to learn. And they bring great um, advice and great knowledge. So um, here's, here's my, my close. Engage communicate, collaborate, educate, and entertain. If you can do those five things based on the new world of marketing and focus on those, you will be very successful. And thank, you for, and thank you for the time. Well, well, thank you for having us. And we appreciate you know, uh, you know, the people you mentioned and, and yourself coming and doing this event with us so that we have an opportunity to provide these learnings out to the community. and. Uh, it's really special that you take the time to do it. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. My pleasure. Take care now. All right. Thank you. Thank you.